You boys be quiet down there! Chibi Bean Man was an original game series by Japanese software company NCS, under their video game brand Masaya. The company is probably best known for the Langrisser series and the Cho Aniki series, as well as a ton of anime licensed titles. The first three Shubi Beam Man games were released for the PC Engine, and a fourth game was released on the Super Famicom Satellaview download system. This game was also finally officially released on its own cartridge in 2017, which is why we want to talk about this series now. This video will be split into two parts. In part 1 I will take a look at the original trilogy of games released for the PC Engine. Part 2 will cover the fourth game for Super Famicom. The story of Kaizo Chojin Shubibin Man is simple, yet unique. Aliens have invaded Earth, but a professor has created cybernetic technology in order for humans to fight back. The professor chooses two promising human subjects, Tasuke, a young neighborhood fishmonger, and Kyapiko, who is described merely as a high school girl. The professor experiments on them against their will. Actually, that's pretty fucked up when you think about it and transforms them into the cybernetic attack team, Shubi Bean Man. You might be wondering about the game's strange name. Shubi Bean is the sound of something flying quickly through the air, as it might be transcribed on the pages of a manga. And the lead-in title, Kaizo Chojin, would normally mean cybernetic superhuman. But in this case, the kanji for super has been replaced by a kanji with the same pronunciation, which means town or neighborhood. This is to convey that the protagonists are supposed to be kind of old-fashioned, local sorts of kids. Especially the male protagonist, Tusuke, who was conceived as working at a neighborhood fish shop. The creators wanted to juxtapose the old-fashioned nature of the characters with the futuristic cybernetic technology. So let's take a close look at each of the games themselves. This is the original Kaizo Chojin Shubibin Man from 1989 for PC Engine. The game has you navigating a map toward the final stage at the enemy castle. You don't need to play all of the stages in order to finish the game, but unlocking more locations on the map will allow you to find new power-ups and buy additional ones from the professor, which will make defeating the final stage a lot easier. When you select a stage, the side-scrolling action begins. You can jump, crouch, and attack enemies with your sword. Holding down the attack button will release Shubi Beam Man's super secret special attack, the Shubi Beam! As is the case with all Shubi Beam Man games, there is two player simultaneous play, and if you play alone, you will have the choice to play as either Tasuke or Kyapiko. Playing with a friend will allow you to get a boost by standing on the other player's head. This can also make it a little easier to handle some of the platforming in the game but playing alone is definitely the easier way to go. The players share a life meter, and they can hit each other. This doesn't take away any life, but will temporarily stun your friend and give them a very bad time. Even playing alone, this game is not without its share of annoyances. A bit of momentum is necessary when your character starts walking, and even when they get going, they can't move very quickly. The control for the jumping doesn't exactly feel great and the hit detection is atrocious. The hitboxes are much bigger than they should be. You can sometimes use this to your advantage against the enemies and bosses, but taking damage from attacks that clearly didn't make contact with your character's pixels is decidedly not very much fun. In my personal opinion, this game is playable, but feels very much like an early title for the PC Engine, which it actually isn't since it was released a year and a half after the system came out. It's not the most polished or pretty looking PC Engine title from 1989, but it's playable with some effort and patience. You have unlimited continues as in all the PC Engine games, but it is still not an easy game by any means. Two years later, in 1991, Masaya released Kaizo Chojin Shubibin Man 2, Arata Naruteki, 
which means a new enemy. This is the only game in the series which received an English release. TurboGrafx-16 owners know it as Shockman. I remember English language game magazines of the time often saying that the game seems to take a lot of inspiration from the Mega Man series, which I think is a fair enough assessment. Although the game continues the same theme and characters from the previous one, the art style seems to have been changed to resemble the Rockman series a bit. Also, the main weapon of the game has been changed from a sword to a gun, and the Shuby Beam can be used more easily in this one as a quick charge attack, similar to the Mega Buster. The similarities end there though, as your character can still crouch and even fire their gun upward. Also, you can't switch weapons like in the Rockman series, and the game is completely linear. Even the map screen from the original Shuby Beam Man game is absent. I really like how fast the action is in this one. Your character runs quickly, and there is no momentum to worry about this time. The game also changes things up with some side-scrolling shooter stages. A heavy focus is placed on the story. The stages are interrupted frequently for the characters and bad guys to talk. This can get a little annoying since you have to watch these unskippable scenes each time you attempt to play through a stage, but I can still appreciate what they were trying to do here. The story parts remind me a lot of Rockman 7 or Rockman X, but this game actually predates Rockman X by two years, and Rockman 7 by four years. This game also introduces a rival Shuby Beam Man team, Shuby Beam Man Shade, consisting of the male and female characters Jita and Mew. You have to fight Jita a couple times in the game, which reminds me a lot of Rockman's rival Forte, or Bass as he's known in English. But again, this game predates the first appearance of Forte. Could it be? Did Capcom take inspiration from Shuby Bean Man? Anyway, this game was pretty much universally panned by critics. Although the graphics actually look pretty good in still shots, the game seems to lack a feeling of polish when you see it in motion. It feels buggy with lots of stutter in the video and audio in places. Also, the game is tough as hell. The stages have little room for error if you want to get through them in one piece. Unlike the first game, the control is responsive and quick, and the hit detection is fine, so it feels like you are properly rewarded for skill. But there are a lot of cheap surprises that you won't see coming until you learn the stages well. The level of perfection required to get through the later stages of the game is probably more than most players have the patience for. Less than a year later, in 1992, Masaya released Kaizo Chojin Shubibin Man 3, Ikai no Princess, or Princess from Another World. This one was released as a PC Engine CD-ROM, so it was able to take advantage of the CD format to have animated cutscenes with voices, as well as a CD soundtrack. And it's quite a decent soundtrack in my opinion if you can enjoy the 90s synthy sound of Masaya's CD music. Lots of new characters are introduced in the story told through the cutscenes. Strangely, the rival team Shuby Beam Man Shade doesn't return in this one aside from a short cameo in the credits role. I guess maybe the developers wanted to forget all about Shuby Beam Man 2. Your gun from 2 has been replaced again with the sword from the first game, and it is very user friendly this time. Swinging it makes a sparkly effect and a fun noise. Almost all of the sound effects are pre recorded PCM. The feeling of polish and clean presentation which was missing from the previous game is mostly present here. It can feel just a little jarring when the game frequently freezes to access the disc, or when you get game over. There's no death animation like in the previous games, the screen just suddenly goes black as you wait for the game over screen to load. The challenge is much lower than either of the previous games, and the entire game can be pretty easily breezed through on the normal difficulty setting by most experienced players. In fact, this game's biggest fault may be that it can sometimes feel a little too short and easy. Some enemies die so quickly that you barely get to see their attack patterns before they're gone. But then again, I guess that's what the harder difficulty setting is for. The great thing about the low difficulty is that anyone can pick this up and enjoy it right away. 
Best of all, the second player rarely gets in the way in this one, making it a perfect game to pull out and enjoy with a friend. This has always been my personal favorite of the three. Frankly, I really can't say anything else about this game other than that you should have it in your PC Engine collection. I wouldn't recommend going too far out of your way to get the first two, unless you are a completionist and have to have all of them for your collection. That's all for the first three Shooby Beam Man games for PC Engine. In the next video, StuRat is going to tell you about the fourth and final game, Shooby Beam Man Zero for Super Famicom. So stay tuned and subscribe to Basement Brothers to make sure you don't miss out.